this is going to be my last Beretta video. Oh, no, wait a second. Sorry, that, that's a Browning. That's, that's a gun that actually works out of the box. And uh, the customer support is there in the off chance you need it. So this is going to be my very last Beretta video. And this will be a little bit of documentation and my experience recently with Beretta regarding a roughly $2,050 MSRP 20 gauge shotgun for waterfowl hunting. What an absolute disaster. So this is the replacement shotgun that was sent to me by Beretta. Okay, so it was a Beretta A400 Extreme Plus in 20 gauge, Max 7, 28 inch barrel. Actually a pretty nice gun provided they have some form of quality control, but which evidently they don't. But the, the point is, was intended to be actually a really nice waterfowl shotgun. Um, so mine came directly from the factory, out of the box, irreparable. The only thing that I actually don't have in email were the actual defects. Um, unfortunately, that part wasn't put in an email, not in writing. I got pretty much everything else I need to prove how awful their customer service is, but I do not have the specific failures. And the specific failures were, number one, rib out of spec so when you put it on the uh, gun it's about and i'll show a picture here if you look closely you can see the rib is heavily leaning toward the right side of the receiver that picture shows the rib out of spec meaning it is to the the right so when you are pointing at something, if you square everything up the way it's supposed to be, you're probably not going to hit center. All right, that's problem number one, right? Problem two was the magazine tube was out of spec. So obviously being that that has a threaded magazine cap, that would stop you from being able to seat the barrel onto the receiver correctly. It still had play back and forth. But then number three, most importantly, actually somewhat dangerous by the way, is the receiver was out of spec. So initially they thought it was just the magazine tube and it actually turns out it was the receiver that was out of spec. So the barrel would move back and forth even after having the barrel nut tightened down and I'll show that picture here. In this photo, you can see the barrel against the receiver. All I had to do was grab the barrel, pull it with my hand, and here's the gap you can see. So as you could tell, there's a huge gap there, and it can actually grow, and it'll go back and forth. And knowing that these are rotating bolts, probably not the safest thing in the world. Thank gosh, I was thinking and opted to call Beretta. So the initial issue started, I think it was October 10th I called them. I said, hey, you know, I've got multiple problems with this gun. This isn't just one. I didn't realize it was all three. Uh, but anyways, the uh, gentleman I spoke to, I wish I'd have gotten his name. He was the only person from customer service uh, that actually gave a crap and helped at all. Okay. He sent me the label. Now, it took a good 45 minutes or so to have this discussion with everybody there. It's a very slow process. Breda moves at, at a, a snail's pace and they're slower than molasses in the winter time. So he opts to send me the label. That's all well and good. I package the gun up, I go home, and obviously I drive right to UPS and, and ship it out that day. They received it October 12th. Now, the part that really chaps my ass about Beretta is that gentleman was, was pretty sincere, at least from what I could tell, and saying, listen, we're going to rush this out because it's it literally was the beginning of our waterfowl season, and this is my only, or was, my only 20-gauge for waterfowl hunting. So it was pretty important that I have... the gun back right away not to mention for gosh sakes this thing is a two thousand dollar semi-auto shotgun for duck hunting 
Jesus mighty. Like, come on, people. Like, you know, okay, you made a mistake, but own it and take care of it right away. So that's kind of where it stopped, okay? I heard nothing. I checked the tracking, and the gun was not received in until I called about three weeks later, which I'll put a photo here. So they received the gun finally after I called multiple times. You, the one thing I'm going to tell you is if you're going to buy a Beretta or if you bought a Beretta and now you're having problems, which is probably pretty likely, but my suggestion to you is be diligent. Do not sit around. Do not wait for them to call you. You've got to be aggressive. You must keep calling, keep emailing customer support. If you do not, if you, if you do not be a little on the aggressive side and you're not persistent, you will not get service. So they did not check the gun in until the end of October after I called five times. So let me put a screenshot. This is their phone number. So you guys know I'm not lying. This is their phone number. And this is how long I was waiting. I think the fourth or fifth time. Here's a photo of that screenshot. So that was over an hour. What I will tell you, what I learned the hard way with Beretta, because they don't care, because they can't serve their customers, just so you understand, if there's two people in front of you, even one person in front of you, you may be waiting at least an hour. There's, And I know every time I got to speak to a live person, I was done within a few minutes. So I'm not quite sure what they're doing with the rest of their time. They're obviously not efficient, going back to just not caring again. But anyways, that was over an hour wait. Just so you understand, I have... There's an option where you can press one where they'll call you back. I suggest you do that because there are most of the time they don't call you back. So otherwise you'll just sit there and you'll wait on hold all day and nobody's going to sit on hold all day. So that would be my suggestion to you is you, you hit the number one option once you finally get through to customer support and have them call you back because you will be waiting a long time, a very long time. Okay, the next part is that they finally get a hold of the gun. It takes them about two weeks to send me an email saying that your gun is irreparable. You know, call with information, blah, blah. Okay, so I did. That took another couple days, right? That was when the woman I spoke with, who is not in any of these letters, by the way, um, I can't remember her name, but it, it's it's not Aslan or however you say it. But anyways, she's not helpful at all, didn't care, and just basically read off. She, she obviously didn't understand guns, and she just read off what the gunsmith said, and the gunsmith said, rib out of spec. Needs a replacement barrel. Magazine tube out of spec. Needs a replacement magazine tube. Oh, we can't fix this gun. The receiver is out of spec. So they literally made a gun in Italy, went through the, the camo dipping process, so they camo dipped a gun that was irreparable, and then shipped it over here and had to pay tax and had to pay importation fee and all that stuff. Then to go and sell it to a distributor, then to a distributor to a gun, a gun shop who then sold it to me. Then they have to go and replace it. Isn't that incredible? What an incredible waste of money. They absolutely lost money on this gun. And you almost wonder how, you, how many times you can afford to do that. So the, the next portion is after I finally get a hold of her, okay, and she tells me that the gun's irreparable and we have the three major issues. She had no other answers of when they could get me the replacement gun. They didn't know if the replacement gun was in stock. And I said, listen, I don't care about camo finish at all. I just care that it's some sort of camouflage or non-glare finish. And 
it's 28 inch barrel. I don't like short barrels. That's all I really care about. I said, I'm will what do you have? I'll accept pretty much anything at this point. I haven't had the gun for over a month. I'm getting into waterfowl season. I really want to test this gun. So she said that she'd have to get back to me. I proceeded to tell her that it's basically the worst customer service that I've ever had in the firearms industry. And could I speak with somebody? Because I was told initially that it would be rushed through and it would not take very long because we're in the middle of waterfowl season and it's such an expensive gun. She said that I'd get a manager call back. Now, obviously, I never got a manager call back. Beretta is not concerned about pleasing their customers. You know, they're, they're still making sales today based on what they were many years ago. But at some point, things catch up. Ford in the 70s, it all catches up. Like, you're making money based on all of your previous years. But the guys like me who were, who were Beretta diehards have now realized Beretta isn't what they used to be. So here is the, uh, a series of text messages from my FFL, who, as you can tell, was getting a little bit frustrated. And I know we spoke on the phone and he had to send their the FFL information three times, but I only got it two times in a text message as proof. He said that he thinks that they're borderline incompetent. That or they're just an unorganized, he's just not sure. But you can tell he was kind of getting a little irritated with sending the FFL information multiple times. So here's a screenshot of that. He had to send it, I think it was at least three times, might have been four, I'd have to call him, and I'm not going through that effort for this video. The next part was, I was getting no response after I did finally talk to that one woman who said I would get a manager call back and also told me that the gun was completely irreparable. So, after telling me it's completely irreparable, which is, okay, I guess I can kind of live with that, it's hard to believe, but okay, I, I guess so. Um, don't get the manager call back. Now I'm like, man, I'm, I'm trying to get this gun, and I'm, I'm, I've lost a lot of faith in Beretta, but I, I was still willing to give Beretta a chance. I still didn't get the gun, okay? Still didn't get a response, didn't get anything. So I started emailing and I was sort of getting some service that way. They try to do a lot of email because they don't want to talk to you because, well, they just don't want to talk to you. I mean, obviously when you have three or four people in line and you still don't get a call back at nine in the morning, that obviously tells you they're not talking to people or they're talking to only who they want to, which is fine, right? I just won't spend money on your products ever again. It's not a big deal. You're not hurting my feelings. My, I'm sure plenty of other companies will accept my money. So then finally, I think it's the end of November, and I will put a screenshot of that email right here. Keep in mind, this email string had gone back and forth for about six or seven times over a month. So this setting is relatively new. Why they used it, I'm still not sure. That email is, as you could tell, they've now opted to not accept um, responses from, from my email address. Now, I had conversed with them in email for well over a month. You know, why did they start doing that? Well, they probably don't want to talk to me anymore because I was contacting them about once a week, and that's probably too much for them. They don't want to accept one call a week. Well, here's the thing. You made a bunch of prop. First off, you sold me a defective product, number one. Number two, you promised that you would get the gun out quickly. It's literally the beginning of waterfowl season, and we're getting toward the end now by the time I got this hunk of crap back. So contact you one a week, I don't really think that's that bad. And I didn't cuss, I didn't scream, didn't shout, didn't yell, didn't anything. 
I got a little irritated. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you about that. But who wouldn't when you get a defective piece of junk that's $2,000, right? So anyways, I get nothing. And I tried for about two weeks and gave up. So then this comes in the mail. Dear valued Beretta customer. Well, I was a Beretta customer. No longer. This is to confirm that your A400 Extreme blah blah with serial number was replaced with this. Please do not hesitate to contact me. I wouldn't even try to contact you because you wouldn't respond anyway. We all know that. Come on, I've been doing dealing with this for two months. So 500 years, one passion. That one passion is definitely not customer service. Good job, Beretta. But here's what happens, okay? This gun, literally, they tell me, as, as per, think about this. This is to confirm. Like, we spoke already. We never spoke about th replacing the shotgun. Uh, you told me you had to replace it, but you didn't tell me what serial number. You didn't tell me anything. This letter is written like we had discussion. There is no discussion. They don't care about having discussion. And honestly, I don't even know if this is a good gun. It's brand new. It's in the box. I didn't open it. And I'm selling it. I'm selling this shotgun. I'm not touching it. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm not unwrapping it. I'm selling it. I'm taking a loss. And that's it. It's really just that simple. I'm not dealing with it. But they acted like I knew. But just so you know, that's two months after they received the gun that I got that let that that the letter was dated. And then my FFL, it just mysteriously showed up. He had no idea um, the end of last week. And that's when I got this gun back. So about a nine to 10 week journey to get a replacement gun. And I am 100% wholeheartedly convinced that I would not have gotten it in such a short period of time, which is already ridiculous, I get it, but I'm saying I would not have gotten this gun so quickly had I not been persistent. So what I'm saying to you guys is if you're going to buy a Beretta or if you bought one and you're having issues, okay, you got to be persistent or you're not going to get it in any sort of time. I am wholeheartedly convinced it's because I was being persistent once a week, also following up with an email to try to get a response, okay? What I will tell you is Beretta was great at some point. They were good. They are not good anymore, okay? Yes, they don't make complete junk. Of course, there's some guns that come out and work, right? But you also get a defective $2,049 MSRP shotgun. I mean, completely defective. Not just one defect, not two defects. Three, an irreparable gun. Unbelievable how does that happen. But because of this and the level of frustration and how much they don't care, what Beretta did not know is had they just executed correctly on this gun, well, this is the good one, right? Um, the bad one is, I guess, destroyed. But had they done a good job, what they didn't know is I was in the market for a Beretta DT11. I'm big into sporting, and I love sporting clays, uh, trap, five stand, that kind of thing. And I do a lot of shooting, guys, like a whole lot of shooting, okay? I do not have a Mech 9000 for funsies, okay? It's because I need it. The point is, I was in the market for a DT-11. If any of you guys know anything about a DT-11, they're about a $10,000, $11,000 gun. And because of Beretta, because of this awful customer service, I can't justify spending ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 on a shotgun that I think is going to end up potentially having issues. And if I have the issues, you're not going to support me. So I can't spend 10 plus thousand dollars on a shotgun with a manufacturer who refuses to support you without wasting hours and hours and hours and hours of your time trying to get work done. 
So because of that, Beretta, I will not be purchasing a DT11. And also because of that, that Beretta is getting sold. This Beretta is sold. That Beretta handgun also getting sold. And the only one I'll be keeping, the only one is the 686 Silver Pigeon which will probably end up getting sold and replaced with another brand. So, due to your customer service and the, where the, the way that you care about your customers and the quality that your products are, right? 500 years, one passion. Can't forget that one. I'll now be looking at brands such as Parazzi, Kohler, Caesar Greeny, Rosini, Blazer, I'm going in now a different direction for that high-end shotgun need. So that ten plus thousand dollar sale, which you guys already had, and I almost wasn't considering anybody else like a fool, because I thought, man, Beretta, that's the gun. I've had Beretta for 15 years, and I've had nothing but good luck with Beretta. Well, you know what? Shame on you guys. So if you're happy, I'm happy. So you guys just lost a DT-11 sale and probably most likely Kohler will be getting an F-Series sale. So guys, this is my video documentation of my recent experience with Beretta. It was awful. It was terrible. It's the worst that I have ever had. And it's taken a 15-year customer and now making me I will not consider purchasing a Beretta, Beretta family of products for many, many, many years to come. Until I start reading about other people not suffering and struggling and not having quality control issues, I won't be purchasing Berettas here in the future. And I suggest if you're in the market for anything shotgun related, gun related, that is part of the Beretta family of products that you give a lot of other companies that aren't a Beretta family of products. You mind that Spinelli, that's Franke, that's Stoger, etc. That you start looking at some other brands, consider some other brands. Because some of these companies are starting to step up their A game. Browning would be a, a big one. They weren't doing so well many years ago with their customer service. And I just read the other day a guy damaged a gun by accident on his own, his fault. He admitted it, told them what he did, said, Hey, I'll pay to get this fixed. And you know what they did? They repaired the gun for him and sent it back in less than two weeks because it was hunting season. Now, that's customer service. Now, I, I still don't know if I would have done that because, I mean, he literally said he damaged a gun. But if they'd have just sent it back in that short period of time, that gentleman is – they now just created a, a Browning loyal fan. And guess what? That Browning silver right there, that's replacing that Beretta – right there so Super X4 replaced this boat ore and then that other browning replaced the other Beretta it's really that simple so it looks like I'm going that route for my waterfowl needs for now who knows it could change in the future but this is where I'm at and the crazy part is the Super X4 and the browning silver I tested them in the field I didn't even go and try them at a range first killed birds with them every day and they all ran like sewing machines so there you go that's my experience do with this information as you will but i really do suggest that you guys put some thought and effort into other brands before you go and consider a beretta family of products because this could happen to you